Damn, this game's VR supported. It sucks I don't have a VR headset. Seems like you are having VR troubles, my friend. Let's go and buy you a VR headset. Let's go! Damn, there's just so many VR headsets to choose from. Luckily, we have tested all of these so that you can choose one for yourself. Is Quest 2 still the king or it has been dethroned by the arrival of Quest 3? We have chosen these headsets because of their compatibility with Steam VR and Unreal Engine. We also believe they are most recognizable out of all the current headsets in the VR headset market. The purpose of these tests are to compare the headset compatibility with our game Cradle of Sense and how they perform in-game and in development with the current spotlight on newly launched Quest we want to find out if this is really the best out there. We will be testing the headsets on the same PC system with specifications Ryzen 7950X 16 core 32 thread processor 32 GB DDR5 RAM at 6000 MHz with a RTX 3080 Ti GPU. It's impressive. We will be ranking these by using a generic tier list with factors of gameplay experience and the development experience. Our talented team here at Cradle of Sins has developed VR games for many years and these are the most common headsets we have come across. For this video, we have also created a questionnaire so that public can also voice their opinions and help us to come to a conclusion. So to start, let's go through the specs of these headsets. The latest in line, the Meta Quest 3 has the resolution of 2064 by 2208 pixels per eye, refresh rate of 90 hertz and can go up to 120 hertz. Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 processor, 8 GB of RAM, storage capacity of 128 GB to 512 GB, Type-C cable support, battery life of up to 2 hours with field of view of 110 degrees, sitting at a price range of just $499.99. And the Meta Quest 2 has a resolution of 1832 by 1920 per eye, refresh rate of 90 to 120 Hz, Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Gen 1 processor. 6 GB of RAM, storage capacity from 128 GB to 256 GB, cable C-type support, battery life of 2.2 hours, with field of view from 86 to 96 degrees, sitting at a price of just $249. The Rift S has resolution of 1280 by 1440 per eye, refresh rate of 80 Hz, connection type being USB plus display port. Recommended CPU being at i5-4590 or Ryzen 5 1500X and the recommended GPU being at GTX 1060 or RX 480. Recommendation of RAM is at 8GB with the field of view sitting at 115 degrees and the price tag of just $399. HTC Vive has a resolution of 1080 by 1200 per eye, refresh rate of 90 Hz, connection type being USB 2.0 plus display port HDMI. Recommended CPU being at i5-4590 or FX8350 and the recommended GPU being at GTX 1060 or RX 480. Recommendation of 8GB RAM with the field of view sitting at 110 degrees and the price of this device is $579. Quick disclaimer, we are not virtual reality headset experts. We are game developers and this is just our personal opinion and experiences with these headsets. Your experience might differ. So let's dive in for the testing. Unfortunately, our footage of Meta Quest 3 corrupted but luckily, we still played it and tested it. Meta Quest 3 had even better quality and resolution was way better than Quest 2. The controllers are better to hold and lightweight for a more comfortable experience. Quest 3 was also annoying to set up, which can be frustrating. Next up is Rift S. The Rift S was a great experience. The quality wasn't the best, but maintained a good FPS. The main positive was that Rift S was by miles easier to set up, almost as simple as plug and play. Next up, the HTC Vive. 
The controllers on Vive were relatively easier and the vibrations made the experience a lot more immersive. The setup was even harder than the Quest series, as you require trackers to be able to use the headset, which can be annoying with the limited space and experience. Now finally, the Meta Quest 2. The Meta Quest 2 had a great quality overall. It was very nice experience, but because of the higher quality, the FPS was lower. Quest 2 took a lot longer to set up as compared to Rift S. We had many connection issues, which can be very frustrating, especially for the first timers. So, Amash, what do you think about the HTC Vive? Well, it's, it's a really good headset, uh, but the overall experience goes uh, on a pretty uh, low list side of things because again, you know, the setup is pretty hard and uh, the, the, the plus sides are that uh, the hefty sensation and the quality of controllers is really good. But having said that, it's pretty, it's pretty hard to play and uh, yeah, doesn't, doesn't match the expectations of our players. Yeah. So, somewhere around the lower side of uh, the spectrum. Yeah, I think it's kind of more of like a baseline because there's not really earlier yes. headsets to come out. Everything past then, with a few exceptions, have definitely been vastly premium on it, but that's not necessarily by the bottom headset, but just in today's market, yeah. it's probably average, if not low average. Absolutely. Uh, and what do you think about uh, Quest 2? Personally, I don't like the Quest 2, at least for the development side of things, getting to be set up is a real pain. Air Link rarely, if not doesn't work, especially yeah. when dealing with Unreal Engine. Yeah. It's constant frame drops, constant lag, it's just a really not great headset. Yeah. But it does still offer that wired option, which is yeah. still okay. I would kind of say it's more line, more along the lines of kind of like average in today's world. So yeah, uh, I mean, along with the Air Link not working, as well as the wired connection kind of a relatively unstable thing. Like yeah. it still provides that option, but the option being provided yeah. still is the greatest. Uh, but I'd like to acknowledge uh, the Quest 2 creates this expectation and this consumer base, which actually, like Quest 2 was one of the first VR headsets with actually people consume. So I would I would like to give it uh, somewhere around the uh, keep it in the middle because uh, it gives a good, uh, a lot of like, overall experience without a lot of setup. Of course, there are things that yeah. are not being connected and uh, you know technical uh, issues like that. But uh, again, it's still a relatively uh, good VR sensor. So I would like to keep it in uh, the, the mercy. And uh, what, what do you think about? It? I think the middle's fair. It's, it's very much a baseline of today's market. There are much better options which will go to yes. soon, but. Other than that, it's not bad. The price point has to be taken into consideration where it is, it's like it's average performance, it looks average, the price is average. It's a really good middle ground for a headset. Yeah. So uh, what I think about Quest 2 uh, is that the standalone part of Quest 2, like it has like a done GPU and uh, uh, its own internal processors, which will, which helps it to make it like a standalone device, which is not relied on other in PC or in you know, others. Yeah, it does do that, but yeah. it also does get kind of like an average capacity. Yeah, yeah. So I do think that being like kind of on the middle of the list, yeah, is still a pretty fair place for it. I, I reckon yeah. it'll perform relatively well there. And it's kind of one of those headsets that if you want to get into VR, but you yeah. still got a little bit of money lying around to be able to do so. Yeah, I think the Quest Two is probably your best, your best bet for that. Really, it just is an overall so an all right experience. It's all right for developing on. Yeah, uh, most importantly, it runs Kirkland Sims all right. Um, but it's nothing amazing, and you will hide and count issues with it, but it really is a headset where you truly do get what you pay for with the price of it. Rift S, what do you think about that? Personally, the Rift S is my favorite out of all of these. It is my go-to whenever I'm developing anything, whenever we're doing any videos, chances are you'll see me in a Rift S. I mean, like, when we did that big uh, team fight over decided who was getting their choice of lunch, uh, I was in the Rift S in that. This my is literally is my go-to. I cannot stress this enough. It's such a simple setup. It's just plug and play. A few seconds of mess around with. Sometimes has its issues, but otherwise it's got consistent high frames. Good for the price of it. Uh, yeah. Most importantly, minimal setup. So uh, I think a Rift S is a pretty good choice. Uh, apart from uh, it's a bit bulky, but well, not pretty good and has good performance. So I would like to give it uh, an eight here, and uh, I think that's that's that suits the. Uh, yeah, sweet. I'd say that's uh, fine. Uh, let's talk about Quest 3 now. What do you think about uh, it and uh, what, what your experience has been? 
Well, truth be told, I haven't really used it all that much. Um, but from what I've seen of it, it's very impressive. I was able to use color paths through to be able to, while still being a VR headset, it's able to provide that kind of like augmented reality aspects to it, which I personally yes. found very enticing. Yeah. Like I keep seeing clips on um, TikTok, which you should follow us. When it comes to Quest 3, that's the top on the list. That's like, you know, S grade, I, I would say, because uh, again, uh, it's very uh, easy to set up. Uh, it has color pass through. Uh, you can set up like while wearing VR headset, which uh, is the issue you can't fight controllers and uh, like these are issues with boys and text quest uh, 2 as well um, yeah, and, uh, You know these issues. So I, I would say like in terms of the pan lens Which it has and gives like super clarity. It has like really good uh, sharp pixels uh, which which lead to a very good uh, overall game experience That is what I, I would say like differentiates Quest 3 and I think that is why it's top on the list. Yeah. The, uh, the best part about Quest 3 is is that uh, it works like really well with uh, uh, Cradle of Sins and it's just like super nice gameplay or overall, overall experience and the high frame rate and that is why I'm in love with Quest 3. So I, I will keep it on the top of the list. Yeah. Uh, let's good. talk about the last headset and that is Logitech. It's a, it's a headset. It's a headset, I guess. Uh, it's, it's expensive. Yeah. Um, it doesn't boast any of the things such as yeah. the color pass through of the. It feels light. more like the HTC Vive more than anything, yeah. um, but just with a much higher price. Okay, so I think I think the best case would be to just keep it. Uh, on the on the lowest, lowest. Uh, spectrum. So, thanks for watching our tier list video, and uh, well, we hope you did have a very nice Christmas, and hopefully, we'll have a very good New Year. Yeah, happy New Year! Oh.